people of the world, welcome back. Another day, another video. Well, kind of another month, another video. It's been a while, which I do say in every video. Sorry for the slackness. But boy, have the last couple of months been a strange one. Honestly, more fascinating than ever. Seeing these two back here just unlock their absolute instinct and literally turn into birds that almost seemed wild and build a nest in one of our bathrooms. Now I've been meaning to update you guys on this for a very, very long time, as this has been going on for a couple of months. And if you guys do follow our Facebook or Instagram or TikTok, you would have seen all the updates. But with YouTube, I like to keep things pretty detailed. And I think we really wanted to know exactly what was going on, what they were thinking, what the actual kind of final outcome would have been uh, before we actually put a whole video out there and then literally a month later it was a completely different story. So let's start from the start. Now a few videos ago, um, I did mention we were, I was having a bit of a problem flying them. Um, we were going to the same parks all the time and they just kept taking off. They kept kind of exploring. They weren't just getting bored. That was a big factor of it because it was kind of solved with new locations, but they were looking for a place to nest. Now, we had a lot of options at this point. Do we fly them individually? Do we just let them nest at home? I mean, the amount of you guys out there that threw ideas was great. I mean, we're not pros. We never have claimed to be. We're not experts. We're kind of going day by day, doing our best. Hope we can keep them happy. And it's not easy. They are absolute crazy amounts of work. And I do say this every video. I will never, ever recommend these birds as pets for anyone. But with the flying options, we decided to try fly them individually. And we did that, you know, a good couple of times a week, as well as together, but more individually. And then they started getting really, really good. They were back on form. I think they kind of missed each other in the skies. But we did notice all around the house, they did try and build little nests. Now this video here is back in February, even before the nesting season starts. The moment they find a piece of material on the ground or some cardboard or something like that, they basically start pulling it together. They get very, very, very close and they start creating a nesting space. Every time they did this, we basically cleaned it out, took it away. Back in March, which you probably have seen, they went into that cupboard and they got a bit cozy in there. And we were just thinking, okay, is this gonna get worse? If we just keep clearing out these spaces and telling them they can't do it, they'll probably just get over it. But they didn't. And they kept trying and trying and trying to find little spots around the house. This one spot right here on the couch was something Mikey was adamant to make a nest in. And a lot of people told us, I mean, professionals were reaching out basically saying, this is the reason their birds aren't housed together or they don't spend time together that much because these things do happen. If you have two macaws and it doesn't just have to be a male and a female, you get lesbian and gay birds too. They will eventually couple up and they will show these behaviors. And as you guys know, Mikey and Mia have been getting closer and closer and closer. And when they were trying to nest on this couch, honestly, we found it quite adorable. We didn't really stop it too much until they started getting really aggressive. We let them play around and hide under blankets. We found it kind of cute and fun. Uh, but the moment they started getting really territorial to a point where we couldn't sit on our own couch, we were like, okay. This is getting a bit out of hand. They eventually realized that downstairs was a pretty high traffic area. They're down here a lot. So they basically ventured upstairs. Now I remember I think it was one day we left I think a robe and a towel on the ground. Uh, they dragged them both into the corner just outside this bathroom and started doing nesty things there. Then anytime we'd leave like a box around or like a paper bag or something like that, they'd grab that and drag it too. Uh, we ended up having to kind of flatten out a towel completely on that area because they were showing signs that they wanted to start ripping up the carpet as well. So of course you had to take precautions. Now, it was at this point when we kind of just sat down and thought, you know, firstly, these birds should have never ever been pets. And the fact there is breeders out there pumping out hundreds of these birds every single year that just end up who knows where, probably locked in cages as ornaments in the corner of people's rooms for a couple of years until they get sick of them and then rehome them until the next person gets sick of them and that cycle continues. Honestly, I feel so bad for half these birds and we see a whole lot more on how bad these birds are treated all around the world just from having the socials we do. People send us photos and videos all the time. People try and give us their birds all the time. These birds definitely shouldn't have been pets if they were just left in the wild. I know the wild's not an easy place, the wild's not a fun place, but that's where they were meant to be. They were doing a whole lot less suffering for these birds out in the world. But back to my point, we figured these birds aren't meant to be pets. Uh, so who are we to kind of pull them apart or separate them or tell them they can't nest? So we kind of just left them upstairs. They eventually moved in to the bathroom when the door was open. Uh, luckily we do have two bathrooms, three toilets. So it wasn't a big loss in that sense. And they got really, really cozy there. They basically sat there 
all day long. They drag little bits and pieces in now and then. Now as they drag things into the nest, Mummy Human did give them a little hand, you know, positioning a few things like their towel and stuff like that. But the majority of it they did themselves and they were working on it every single day. And then they got really, really, really aggressive. Uh, basically to a point where if we even went upstairs, they would attack. Now, I'm not talking just get away from me attacks, I'm talking let's draw blood attack. Now, I remember I did actually have a chat with Brody who had Adventures of Roku. Uh, those who've been following Free Flight for a while probably know who they are. Um, and he basically said the exact same thing happened with his birds. They got nasty, they completely turned against him, and they'd literally be out for blood. Um, he did say, if you kind of incorporate yourself into this relationship, it would it wouldn't be as bad so mommy human basically did that she used to just kind of sit right next to the bathroom that's where she'd work and they never really saw her as a threat now i went on holiday for about two weeks went back home to new zealand this is at the very very start of june now when i got back they were super 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 pissed to have me around basically even if they started hearing me go up the stairs they'd just run out of their nest and try and attack even if i got close to it they would go absolutely nuts. Now, we're talking now, Mia was spending maybe 95% of her time just in this nest. Mikey, probably about 80%. He'd usually spend a lot of time outside it, just kind of guarding it, making sure no one got close. Um, it made things extremely hard when friends would come around. Um, Dan and Carly, who have Shelby, they've looked after these guys through this time and they said never again. It was literally the hardest thing ever. They couldn't even pick them up to get them into the aviary. Now, you may think this does sound horrible, but honestly, it's probably been the most relaxing and calm time we have had with them. Uh, they were rarely ever downstairs. They didn't make a single sound, because obviously in the wild, if you're nesting, uh, you don't want to start screaming, letting everyone know you have a nest there, to obviously avoid predators. If they ever needed to poop, they'd come out, um, go into our bedroom, jump out the window, and go out the window, then straight back in. Or they'd come downstairs, poop, and then go back up. They're extremely clean in that sense. But it was calm. Like, we had the entire downstairs to ourselves. We never had to clean up here. They ate up there as well. We tried to keep bringing them down to eat, and they'd just basically go straight back up. So we just ended up bringing their food to them up there. And we chatted to a load of people who've been through this, and a lot of people said, look, this is actually gonna be the most peaceful time you are gonna have. And honestly, it really, really was. We never, ever had them in the aviary until the nighttime uh, when they were sleeping. So they were basically free the entire day. We'd leave our office door open if we were working, and Mikey would always kind of come in. Sometimes he was pretty chill and friendly. He'd jump up on me. Other times he'd come in and just start biting my ankles instantly, and that wasn't as fun. Uh, we ended up putting like a barrier up with a suitcase, and that was absolutely hilarious hilarious because they'd come in they'd look at it and be like okay maybe not now if a lot of people when we posted this online thought why don't they fly in they definitely can if they really really wanted to they could have flown in but with our guys being a little bit lazy they are very very big birds they'd have to really kind of plan that jump to get their wingspan through a kind of door frame that big so it was much easier to turn around and go back to the nest throughout this time we did still take them out to fly but very very rarely maybe once maybe twice a week through that really kind of intense nesting time just so they could actually get out get some sunlight stretch their wings they didn't fly as much as obviously on a normal non-nesting day um, but I think they still really really enjoyed being outside um, the first time I tried to take them out they weren't having a bar of it they didn't even want to come out of the car carrier they literally just kept biting me and biting me but so I decided let's not do that again but all in all honestly it was peaceful it was chill it may have looked absolute manic on our other socials which we were sharing all the updates and there was loads of hate that came in loads especially on Facebook um, a whole lot of people who don't have birds who don't understand birds commenting why are these birds living in your bathroom let them free Ugh, you shouldn't have pets blah 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 now we've had this channel a little while now I've had my fair share of hate doesn't really affect me but it's quite funny how people watch kind of literally 10 seconds of your life and think they know you through and through but online yeah it did look manic I mean every time we went upstairs we were getting attacked but for the majority of the day it was pretty chill we had so much time so much space we didn't really have to worry about them because they just sat they just literally sat there doing nothing the big question are they gonna have babies will they have babies has me a laid an egg none of that actually happened now the reason I'm making this video now is because the last few days this started losing interest in it they've started spending a lot more time out of it they're happy to kind of hang out downstairs again this was never the case before and I think they're just kind of over it uh, maybe Mikey's firing blanks maybe Mia wasn't ready to lay who knows they definitely made love a few times and for those who don't know how birds make love it's not you know the whole 
one thing goes inside another thing situation. It's more kind of the two things that kind of like rub together briefly situation. Um, and they did that a few times. Um, we got a couple of them on film and they seemed like they were enjoying themselves. I mean, I'm not too sure how long it takes for the male to shoot something into the female. I'm pretty sure it's a pretty quick procedure. So we weren't too sure what was gonna happen. Um, but what we did kind of have a feeling why she didn't lay or why she hasn't laid. Every night we would take them into the aviary. Um, usually they were quite reluctant about this, but we didn't want them sleeping in there as well. We didn't really seem, well, natural. That's a horrible word to use in this situation. Not one part of this is natural, but they've always slept in their aviary. They had their sleeping perches. So I think a big, big reason she didn't lay was because she knew she couldn't sit on that egg and protect it all day and all night. She knew at the end of the day she would have to go back to the Avery and then who knows what would have happened to that egg. So maybe that was it. But if an egg ever does come, honestly, we've thought about this and thought about it and thought about it. We've been given a load of different options and just with the kind of way birds are kept worldwide, you know, majority are in cages, the majority of their life, so many get rehomed. I mean, not one person can actually keep these macaws for a lifetime. The way the usual cycle works, say you're young, say you're 20 years old, and you go out there and baby macaw, because that's what someone tells you to do. If you're 20, there's a very, very high chance your life is gonna change in the next 10 years. You might find a partner, you might move out of your mum's house, you might have a job which doesn't give you the time, you might just get sick of the screaming and the noise and the destruction and the cleaning. Oh my God, the cleaning, the mess is another level. Uh, usually, I'd say the messages we get are people wanting to get rid of their bird after a year or two. They think it's fun and then no. If you can break that year or two, usually then it's around the kind of six to eight year mark. You know, they've done a couple of hormonal cycles. They're getting a bit territorial. They're getting a bit aggressive. You're kind of over it. You know, you've had your fun eight years. You're done. Now, this isn't just for the 20 year olds. There's a lot of people who, families with kids, they get sick of their kids getting bitten. They don't want to clean up after their kids and look after their kids, plus a couple of wild birds. It's not a whole lot of fun. And then there's the older people who are retired and you're basically just sitting around at home by yourself with your other half. Your kids have moved out, you got nothing to do, so you go and get a macaw. Seriously, that macaw is going to outlive you, no doubt. And for the older generation that do want to get these birds, like, why don't you just want to relax? Like, chill, enjoy your life. I'm sure you've had a fun run. Why would you want to clean and be a slave to a bird for the rest of your life? Strange, who knows? Either way, Back to the original point I was making. What would we do if they did have babies? Honestly, with the amount out there in horrible conditions, with the amount that are on sale every single day, with the amount of rescues that are completely full, I do not think it is responsible to bring more baby birds into this world. If you really, really, really want a bird, go out and find one of those birds that do need a new home. And this problem won't stop until breeders stop just pushing out hundreds and hundreds a year to basically anyone. They don't ask questions. Well, I'm sure there is some responsible breeders out there, but I've heard of breeders basically picking up the phone, hey, I want a blue and gold macaw. Cool, transfer me the deposit, I'll give you a call when it's ready. That's basically it. They have no idea who's taking this bird. They have no idea if this bird's gonna be clipped, caged, cooked. Honestly, they don't care. They just want to pay their mortgage. At the rate this is going, if people keep Keep buying babies instead of actually taking those birds in that do need new homes. It's gonna to get to a point where all rescues are so full, it'll end up like dogs, where they go to a pound, they have a week to live, and then they get euthanized. And I, for one, don't think it's responsible to really add to that problem. For those who are probably gonna ask, why don't you just keep them, let Mikey and Mia raise their lovely family. Honestly, you couldn't pay me to look after more birds. Um, two is more than enough. And even when we are bird sitting others, it's absolutely hectic. We don't have the time, want, or patience to look after any more birds. Um, and for those of you out there with macaws, you'll probably understand it. Some of you love it. People I know have five, six, seven birds. I don't know how you do it. I mean, I love a good social life as well, so I like to do stuff. We don't want our lives run by these birds any more than they are already. A lot of people also said if they did lay and did hatch, why don't you find good homes for them? Now that was a thought, but seriously, what is a good home? I mean, everyone I know who free flies and who has birds, you know, in our group who come to our kind of bird parties and stuff like that, they all seem like amazing bird owners. You know, they're going all out, they're doing their absolute best. But if you look back on videos, probably maybe two, three, four years ago, I'd say a good, maybe 20, maybe even 30% of those birds are no longer actually with their owners. 
Free flight's a very, very new thing in this country, and people are jumping into it very, very fast. They buy a baby because training a baby bird to fly requires extremely minimal knowledge. These aren't my words, these came from professional trainers. But the amount of people I know, personally, who have got rid of these birds is insane. So, I would hate for that to happen to my Kimia's babies. I'd rather them just not exist at all than have to basically go home to home to home to home. These are my thoughts right now. They could change in a year, they could change in two years, I don't know. But I just thought I'd give you guys a quick update on that. Another thought was actually taking the babies to the wild. I did look into it very, very briefly. I would have looked into it more if I actually did see eggs. It is 100% possible to get baby birds back into the wild, and I think that would have been the smartest, most responsible thing to do. Obviously, with my Kimia raised in captivity, I can't exactly just send them back into the wild. Uh, they would find it extremely hard. Mikey will probably definitely just go find a human and be like, all right, you can be my new human now. Um, and I've thought about this for a very, very long time. If there was a way we could get them both safely into the wild and know 100% they have the skills to survive, where they know all about the predators, where they know where to sleep, where they know to find nests, where they know how to find friends, find food, and avoid humans, I would honestly very, very highly consider it. We only want the absolute best for them. The way humans think, you know, they kind of see something and they're like, I want that, take my money. And in this day and age, you can pretty much get anything you want. It's an extremely kind of selfish trait we have, and it's horrible. And I honestly think if Mikey and Mia did have babies and we put them up online, the amount of people that would want a Mikey and Mia baby just for that Mikey and Mia baby kind of status, I guess. Honestly, it would be a bit crazy, and that's a huge reason we wouldn't as well, just because if you want a bird, don't wait for a Mikey and Mia baby. Honestly, just go save one that needs saving. But yeah, I'm getting way off track here. That was a quick nest update. Any questions at all, honestly, pop them in the comments. We'll do our best to answer them. And we'll do our absolute best to make sure it's not another two months before another video. Anyway, thank you to all our massively amazing regular customers that are keeping on buying the Mikey and Mia and Shelby Dry Mix. Honestly, you guys are amazing. And we're so, so, so happy your birds are loving every single bite of that. We have a small beak blend called Petite Beaks, which is coming out very, very soon. It is amazing. Every ingredient, the way it kind of looks, the way it smells, the way it tastes, it is going to be your small bird's next favorite meal. But for now, thanks so much for watching, and we will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.